Where did it, where did it go? Where did the time go? Easy come, easy go. Oh, isn't that how it goes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stray Kids has gone from survival show group to worldwide sensation in just a few short years. They've sold over 10 million albums, becoming the first JYP act to have one album sell over a million copies with No Easy. Time Magazine recognized Backdoor as one of the 10 best songs of 2020. They are also the third Korean act ever to top the Billboard 200 in the USA. But why? What makes Stray Kids so special and why should you care? What's up friends? I'm Jonathan Miller and welcome back to Jonathan Miller Music where we help each other become better artists. Stray Kids has become a dominating boy group in the K-pop world that is still on its meteoric rise in popularity. Sitting on the cusp of K-pop's ending third generation and budding fourth generation, Stray Kids is a unique group not only for its genetic makeup, but as an everlasting product of the time in which they debuted with JYP. JYP Entertainment is one of the biggest entertainment companies in K-pop, and for good reason. Aside from the many memes about the company and JYP himself, <laughs> There's a reason why the company has the presence that it does now in K-pop and the music industry as a whole. So let's roll back the clocks a little bit. Established in 1997, originally as Pangpong Planning Corporation during the Asian financial crisis by Park Jin Young, JYP Entertainment has grown into a multinational conglomerate. When you started this whole record label, did you ever picture that it would get this big? Hell no. <laughs> its founder, JYP, was an artist, producer, and songwriter before creating the company, dropping multiple studio albums, and one of the biggest South Korean hits of 1994, Don't Leave Me. During his college years, he frequently lived with and became friends with other producers and composers, including Bang Si Hyuk, who would eventually go on to launch the icons you might have heard of, BTS. The two of them worked closely with one another for a number of years, including helping to launch G.O.D.'s first studio album in 1999 with Sidus HQ. Even though it was initially a struggle as the strain of the Asian financial crisis was still taking its toll on South Korea. Luckily, following its successful launch with JYP as their mentor, G.O.D. became a well-known act in K-pop. After signing Rain in 2000, however, is when Taewon Planning Corporation put itself on the map. Rebranding as the JYP entertainment we know today, Rain became one of the biggest acts in all of K-pop and oh, in all of right. Asia when its reigning sold over 250,000 copies, an uncommon and massive feat for a South Korean act. K-pop was clearly starting to spread. The mid-2000s saw a rapid growth in technology and the internet. McBling fashion, cell phone culture, and electropop began to be the dominating sound in music throughout the remainder of the decade. Another force of the 2000s in the new era of celebrity culture that began to make waves with the public around the globe were reality TV shows. Television itself was introduced to Korea in the early 1950s by the Radio Corporation of America, or RCA, during the Korean War. In 1956, Korea set up its first television broadcasting station, HLKZ TV, which eventually was acquired by Hongguk Pangsong Kongsa, or KBS One TV as you probably know it. Throughout President Park Chung Hee's authoritarian government, many restrictions were placed on what television content creators were allowed to produce, carefully balancing entertainment and propaganda until freedom of the press and media was established in 1989 with the registration of periodicals and the Broadcast Act. Fast forward to when Korea was in the throes of the Asian financial crisis in the 90s, television began to shift toward comfort and fun types of entertainment, often including music-oriented programs. Programs combining emotional
emotional, Oxo and observational aspects came into being around this time, fusing them together. Much like how K-pop music combines multiple genres in one song today, these TV programs came to be known as Korean variety shows, with one of the first centering around JYP and Sidus HQ group G.O.D. in the form of Baby Diaries. Although originally pitched to H.O.T., Korea watched as Baby Jaemin was taken care of by the members and its high ratings helped the group gain more notoriety and JYP entertainment as a company. Variety shows continued to grow and grow as reality TV took over the 2000s around the world, as I previously mentioned. JYP's next massive group, which deserves their own deep dive editorial like this one someday in the future, Wonder Girls were introduced to the world through MTV Wonder Girls in 2006. Eventually, JYP's first girl group became the first Korean group ever to break through in the USA when their hit Nobody debuted at number 79 on the Billboard Hot 100 back when streaming wasn't a thing let alone counted toward the U.S.'s toughest chart to get on, JYP expanded out past Asia and launched JYP Entertainment USA in 2008 as Wonder Girls became an opening act for the Jonas Brothers and eventually getting their own movie with Team Nick. Wait! We can't call ourselves the Wonder Girls. What if we get recognized? The Wonder Girls deserve their credit for how they affected the Holly wave. And truthfully, JYP Entertainment deserves its credit for helping to realize the vision of K-pop's success outside of Korea. Fast forward a little further, Courtesy of YouTube and social media, K-pop acts began to go viral on the internet as the 2010s opened up, eventually ushering in K-pop's third generation. By this time, Korean variety shows were a staple for K-pop acts to participate in, allowing the public to get to know their favorite idols in funny, meme-worthy, and emotional ways. Variety shows also encompassed things like talent shows. This gave the public not only the chance to get to know their favorite idols more, but also be introduced to K-pop trainees, even getting a say and directly voting on who could join the next big group. K-pop was rapidly becoming a well-known thing around the globe, and JYP Entertainment saw the potential in that international growth, creating the first Japanese line in K-pop with three Japanese members for twice, adding Chinese and American members to GOT7, survival shows like Who Is Next and 16 got the public involved and drew more audiences into JYP Entertainment groups. Although at this time already considered one of the big three companies in K-pop, JYP still struggled financially to get ahead of its competitors in YG and SM. The internet was making K-pop stars viral sensations, something that was still pretty difficult to do in the early days of social media in the mid-2000s, but JYP was keeping its eye on that change, and reaching distribution deals with other countries set the stage for JYP's next global sensation in the form of a nine-member boy group named Stray Kids. But first, a shout out to this video sponsor, DistroKid. DistroKid is one of the leading music distributors in the world, helping millions of artists like you and me get our music up on streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal. For one small yearly price, you can distribute as much music as you want to as many stores as you'd like. They were the first distributors to offer this business model, and not only are they the fastest distributor, but they also don't take your royalties. As a songwriter, royalties are our bread and butter, so getting music distribution that's easy on the bank is a great thing. DistroKid also has a long list of amazing services that help you manage and promote your music depending on which plan you choose. Hyperfollow is great for getting email addresses and direct links. You can spin the wheel to get on DistroKid's Spotify playlist. They've got generated tools for social media promotion like promo cards and mini videos. But what makes DistroKid the best is their customer service. We're talking about people who have a passion for music and artists who genuinely want to help other artists grow. Getting a hold of someone via customer service is easy, fast, and reliable. Use my special VIP link to save yourself 7% on your first year's membership with DistroKid. Link is in the description. Stray Kids, much as their name implies, is a bit of an odd man out in JYP. Beginning as a survival show in 2017 of the same name, rather than trying to make it to the end past elimination rounds and be voted on by the public to debut as a group like 16, which launched twice, Stray Kids The Show featured a group that was pre-selected and judged by JYP on individual skill and unexpected teamwork missions. Selected not exactly by JYP, but by its eventual leader, Peng Chun. Coming from experience in ballet and modern dance, Bong Christopher Chun passed the JYP auditions in 2010 and moved from Australia to South Korea, where he trained for seven years. Bong Chun trained alongside members of Twice, Got Seven, Day Six, and has spoken about how lonely he got watching his friends debut or leave the company. Still determined, though, he enrolled in MIDI classes to learn more about music production. MIDI stands for Music Instrument Digital Interface. 
and essentially deals with the technical side of connecting multiple music devices, instruments, and computers, and all the audio equipment that's used to record and edit music. In other words, it's a technical standard set up in 1983 so that audio recording devices and instruments like synthesizers and computers all know how to communicate with one another. It's big brain energy, which Bong Chang used to form Three Racha and drop music as a trainee. Another member of Three Racha, Han, spent multiple years studying in Malaysia, eventually graduating over there. He took a year off and told his parents to give him one year to get signed to a K-pop agency, and if he didn't get signed, he'd return to Malaysia. However, nearing the end of his one year, his friend convinced him to audition for JYP, which he reluctantly did, thinking there was no way he'd get in. But he did. Shout out to that friend. As part of Three Racha, he released his first mixtape with his groupmates in 2017. If you're not familiar, a mixtape is a little bit different from an album or an EP, and is a term originating from the 1980s to describe a homemade compilation of songs on a cassette. However, mixtapes in this context come from Black R&B and hip hop culture to describe a self-produced and independently released, oftentimes for free, collection of music by an artist, usually less cohesive in sound than a regular album album and containing any number of tracks, whereas studio albums used to typically contain on average anywhere from 10 to 14 songs. Mixtapes are often dropped underground and used to showcase many different talents or different sounds on one body of work from an artist. Nowadays, because of streaming freeing artists from the runtime and data limitations of a physical CD, the hard line between album and mixtape often gets blurred, but there is a difference. Anyway, Han trained at JYP for three years where he met the final member of Three Raja, Chung Bin. Chung Bin, who was told by Young Hyun Suk of YG Entertainment that he was one of the best rappers he'd heard from JYP, once performed at a school festival to Taeyong's Ring Linga. Upon being accepted into JYP Entertainment, his supportive parents called him a genius and said had they known he was so good, they would have gotten him into music earlier and more seriously. Sung Bin trained at JYP for about two years, and together with Bang Chan and Han, Three Racha would go on to primarily write and produce nearly all of Stray Kids' music, something that doesn't happen very often in K-pop. The trio would also eventually be promoted to regular members of the Korea Music Copyright Association in 2023, a nonprofit organization that exists to support its members' copyrighted content by protecting their intellectual property rights. Each year, based on the amount of royalties they've accrued in the past three years, the KOMCA promotes 25 junior members to regulars, which then gives them the right to vote at the KOMCA general meetings. Fun fact, the first K-pop musician to be promoted to a regular member was G-Dragon in 2011, and other artists now include Suga, RM, J-Hope, Uzi, Boa, and IU. Another member of Stray Kids, Wuding, graduated from the School of Performing Arts, Seoul, and was originally a trainee under SM Entertainment, training alongside members of NCT. Originally a main vocalist in Stray Kids, he eventually left the group for personal reasons and went on to pursue a successful solo career with his debut solo mini-album dropping in 2021. Sunmin lived a short time in LA, where he learned a bit of English while in the fourth grade. He eventually came in second at JYP Entertainment's 13th open audition, where he never missed a day of training and only trained for about a year before joining Stray Kids. Dumin, also known as I.N., is the Makne and youngest member of Stray Kids. As a kid, he often performed Korean trope music. Stemming from the Japanese occupation of Korea, trot music comes from the word box trot, which is a style of ballroom dance, but Korean trot music's signature sound involves repetitive rhythms and vocal flexing. I.N. was also a model as a kid before joining JYP Entertainment, where he trained for two years. Eventually, as a member of Stray Kids, he dropped the bop, that is, maknae on top, which, by the way, in case you've never heard it, if you happen to be the youngest member of your family like I am, consider it your new life anthem. <laughs> has always loved singing and participated in many competitions. He and his family moved to Las Vegas, Nevada for a brief time when he was six years old before moving back to Korea. One day, while shopping with his mother, he was grabbed by the wrist by a JYP scout and handed a business card to audition. Originally creeped out and skeptical, rightfully so, he eventually did go to the audition where he passed and trained for two years. Lino started dancing in middle school and was actually featured in a National Geographic segment long before he joined JYP. Any one of these hopefuls could be the next big thing in K-pop.
He also was a backup dancer for BTS on their Japan tour and even was a featured dancer in BTS's music video for Not Today. Lino trained at JYP for a year before actually being eliminated during the Stray Kids show in episode 4. Another member who was eliminated on the show was Felix. Felix once told GQ Australia that he didn't expect a person like him who was already trying to be like Bangtan to be picked by him to potentially join the group. Also coming from Australia and only training for about a year, Felix had difficulty with learning Korean, which contributed to his elimination in the 8th episode. However, in a surprise twist perfect for reality television, JYP gave Felix and Lino another chance to see if Stray Kids would debut as a 7-member group or a 9-member group, ultimately becoming the latter. Their pre-debut song, Elevator, a song composed on the show, debuted at number two on the Circle Chart in November 2017. Stray Kids was officially on their way to launch a brand new generation of K-pop. The third generation of K-pop is a rather unique one because it's largely where K-pop acts began to really break through in the West. As millennials got older and many Gen 2 groups began to disband or go on hiatus, newer acts at the time like Red Velvet, Twice, BTS, Blackpink, and more captured the attention of coming of age Gen Z. Twitter was flooded with fan cams spreading the word about their favorite groups. YouTube became more intrinsic to music culture after Sai's Hungum Style became the first video ever to pass a billion views. Social media challenges, BTS collaborating with Halsey and other Western acts, or Blackpink and Dua Lipa helped thrust open the eyes of Western audiences to K-pop. Gen 3 acts were tasked with a very tricky challenge of trying to spread Korean culture, but also trying to figure out how to rapidly adapt to the Western market, which has notoriously not been very welcoming to Eastern acts. But not just in the West, though, because K-pop's popularity was growing everywhere. JYP joined Tencent Music Entertainment to launch Boy Story, a Chinese-based boy group in 2016. Weiss was beginning to crush it in Japan becoming one of the most popular K-pop girl groups over there behind acts like Kara and Girls Generation, the global stage was set and Stray Kids was ready to help JYP Nation knock every last remaining border down. As K-pop began to grow, so did misconceptions surrounding it. People called K-pop idols robots or manufactured once they found out about their training regime and they were incorrectly criticized for not writing their own music. So JYP said, all right, bet, and introduced a boy group that practically had full creative control over its work, writing, producing, and arranging nearly all of their own music, and it worked. Stray Kids won Best Male Artist at the 2018 Mamas and Best New Artist at the 33rd Golden Disc Awards. They got a day song for Performance of the Year at the 2021 Asia Artist Awards and were crowned World K-Pop Star at the Circle Chart Music Awards in 2022. Their debut album, I Am Not, was eventually certified platinum for sales exceeding 250,000 copies. Their first Japanese single, Top, debuted at number one on the Oricon Singles chart, making Stray Kids only the fourth K-pop male artist in history to debut at the top of the chart. Their collaboration with Alesso and DJ Korsak for Going Dumb for PUBG landed them at number 13 on the Billboard Hot Dance and Electronic chart. The music video for Thunderous hit 100 million views on YouTube in 55 days, and they topped the Billboard 200 chart with Ordinary, making them the third K-pop boy group behind BTS and Super M to achieve that. Stray Kids, in a testament to their global popularity and K-pop's global expansion, became the first JYP artist to ever have an album sell over a million copies, when Noisy sold over 1.1 million in its first month. Furthermore, they also became JYP's first double million selling artist, and triple million selling artists after dropping Maxident in 2022, making them the second fastest artist in Hongtao history to have an album reach 2 million copies sold, doing so in just six days. Maxident also is the second highest first week sales total in Hongtao history, achieving two consecutive number one albums in the US and becoming the fourth Korean and non-English album to top the Billboard 200, Stray Kids has now sold over 10 million albums worldwide. It's because of this success and label made Twice's popularity that JYP Entertainment entered into a historic and landmark relationship with Republic Records, signing Twice, ITZY, and Stray Kids to its roster. Being signed to multiple record labels is a fairly common practice in the music industry because depending on the business arrangement, all parties will offer something different for the artist. For example, it's really common for K-pop artists to sign with Japanese record labels like AVEX because AVEX helps in Japanese album distribution, helping to get media placements, 
tours, and other promotions. The same goes for Republic Records. Republic is a well-known record label here in the USA and has a fairly good reputation for how it treats its artists, which includes people like Taylor Swift, Ariana Grande, Nicki Minaj, Drake, Post Malone, and many others. A joint venture like this is significant for K-pop, not only because it signifies the USA's growing acceptance of the genre, but it's also a sign that JYP's initial vision of K-pop becoming a global phenomenon is finally becoming a reality. Stray Kids gets the magnificent task of charting new waters where K-pop is already a known thing. Given their success so far, and the fact that they are set to become the first Korean act to headline Lollapalooza in France soon, Stray Kids is showing that just because everyone knows what K-pop is now, doesn't mean there aren't new barriers and walls to dismantle. Stray Kids is a product of the time they debuted and the legacy that developed before them, but they are also spearheading the charge to ensure that legacy isn't lost. Stray Kids writes their own music to showcase that Korea isn't producing robots. It's producing real and unmatched talent that deserves to be heard. Stray Kids helped their own label finally surpass SM and YG, becoming the largest of the big three just five months after debuting in 2018, helping JYP Entertainment achieve 980.26 million US dollars in market capitalization. It's because of acts like Stray Kids that JYP has his artists dominating the West, acts like Niju in Japan, or NMIX reaching Spanish-speaking audiences now. Stray Kids also pays it forward by providing a safe space for their fans, writing songs with gender-neutral pronouns, experimenting with fashion. They donate to causes, more recently with Hyunjin and Chungbin both donating 100 million Korean won to victims of the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. K-pop has now become a global phenomenon, and Stray Kids is leading its fourth generation by not abandoning the work that was done before them. Despite popular belief, Stray Kids is not trying to take BTS's place. They are growing to ensure that K-pop doesn't get written off as a meaningless viral sensation. They are a time capsule of the survival show generation, bridging the gap between the past and the future to ensure that K-pop's success around the world isn't forgotten and that's why Stray Kids' success matters. It's why their artistry matters and why Stray Kids Everywhere, all around the world, makes Stray Kids stay. Oh. Stray Kids has gone from survival show wow. group to worldwide sensation in just a few yeah. short years. Yeah. They've sold over 10 million albums, becoming the first JYP act to have one album wow. sell over. I love this voice. Very mm -hmm. informative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love Love yeah. Yeah. This video got watch watching on it's one hour. Yeah, and I love that like, he came into the states like real fast and mm -hmm. details and everything. Yeah. It's helpful for the beginners, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're in Korea and you want to start a band, like if you watch this video, you know what yeah. goes into there and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, ah, that's very summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whenever we watch this, we keep on learning new things. I didn't yeah. know like uh, Felix was the first time. I was always like wondering why did they. Why was he not like, like well, why was he limited? Mm -hmm. Oh now I know like language was one part of it. Part of it, yeah. <sighs> this was very nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. He yeah. went even back in the days there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, I came mm -hmm. there, said, From there to now. So mm -hmm. that was amazing. Very well produced, very well like facts is there and everything. So very well arrangement of the video, mm. where to start and where to end. It's a good uh, script he used, like that was nice. Mm. So hope you all guys enjoyed that and learned something new. And because yeah. this video is not only for straight kids, if you watch very well, there's a lot of oh. info about okay, yeah. how to K-pop in general. Mm. So stay safe, stay tuned to the next video.